Welcome to Things You Should Know, The Great War. Today we are moving back to the Gallipoli Peninsula. The British Empire and French forces had finally decided enough was enough and they would begin the evacuation of Gallipoli and would have their final troops leave by December 20th, 1915 in what would be known as the evacuation of Gallipoli. This would of course be an obvious Turkish victory. Sir Ian Hamilton, the British commander, had watched the failed attacks by British and Anzac troops to get off the beach in August of 1915. Realizing he'd hit a wall, he sent a request back to British command in London, requesting almost 100,000 more troops as reinforcements. Lord Kitchener, the man responsible for the war, refused and at the most offered a force of 25,000 men instead. British and French commands had both began feeling that the Gallipoli Offensive was a waste of time, money, and men. The only reason they had not already pulled the plug on the operation was because of Winston Churchill's constant pressure to keep the invasion going. It didn't help that the British and French operations in other fronts had impacted their ability to respond to Gallipoli. The invasion of Serbia had tapped out both the British and French reserves, especially in the anticipated invasion of Salonika, where 125,000 troops who were originally destined for Gallipoli had already been rerouted to this new front. The losses by Hamilton and Gallipoli did not help any with the desire to send more troops as well. Instead, on October 11, 1915, Hamilton received a proposal to evacuate Gallipoli in which Hamilton refused, stating they may lose 50% of their men in that kind of attempt. After all, the Turks could fire directly into the docks and landing areas, so there was no spot in Gallipoli that was safe. It wouldn't matter much longer as British command had found Hamilton's defeat on Gallipoli and his estimate of 50% losses for evacuation would result in a vote of no confidence and removal of Hamilton as Commander-in-Chief on October 14, 1915. On October 28, Hamilton's replacement, Sir Charles Monroe, who would after the war be made a Baronet of Bearcrofts in the Shire of Stirling, arrived and immediately inspected the Anzac positions. He found the entire situation untenable and immediately requested the troops be evacuated. Lord Kitchener declined Monroe's request, but himself arrived to investigate the situation. He found the situation galling and recommended evacuation as well, overriding Naval Command Sir Roger Keyes and Rosalind Williams' attempt to veto his orders. Eventually, by December 7th, British Command officially recommended evacuation, but at the time a blizzard had slammed into the Gallipoli coast. However, this did not stop the British and Anzac will. They began evacuation and between December 10th and January 9th evacuated Anzac Cove, Suvla Bay, and Hellas. Contrary to all the other Gallipoli operations, the evacuation was an unequivocal success. And unlike Hamilton's estimate of 50% losses, official losses state only three casualties were quoted as a major part of the evacuation consisted of deceiving the Ottoman observers with military maneuvers put on at the same time as evacuation. However, Winston Churchill did not like the successful evacuation and instead said Monroe, quote unquote, he came, he saw, he capitulated and Churchill continued to mock Monroe's decision for the rest of his life. Churchill, contrary to popular belief, did not really care what the losses were, and his ego had been bruised that his plans had no lasting success and had caused a loss of more than 252,000 casualties, including at least 48,000 dead. The Turks themselves are believed to have suffered 250,000 casualties as well, of which 65,000 were believed to have been killed. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, The Great War.